Uh, he comes to us from Chesapeake, West Virginia. Please welcome Andy Frampton. <laughs> West Virginia front row. We're only proud of the state we're outside of it. That's how it works. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, man. I've been in Sarasota for six years. Last time I was here, I got so drunk I had to take the bus home. That doesn't sound all that funny. Do you realize it's the first time I've ever driven a bus? <laughs> I'm glad y'all thought it was funny. That state trooper didn't think it was funny ever. He's like, give Molly Hatchet their bus back. No, it's a bit back here. I live here now. I'm from Chesapeake, West Virginia, a very small town outside of the capital city of Charleston. That explains the accent for any of you guys that uh, don't encounter rednecks all the time. Yeah, um, I didn't realize until I started going on the road to do stand-up that my voice is very Appalachian. People would tell me, man, you have an accent. I was like, so do you. you know, areas, that's how they work, that's how accents work. And I didn't understand how bad it was until I got an audition for a movie. That's wrong turn seven. I'm gonna be that guy on the porch at the gas station that goes, You gonna die in the woods, girl! <laughs> Got a prime example of how bad it was one time a couple years ago. I was sitting in a doctor's office for a checkup. Me, ten other people, all around the outside, waiting room at edge, looking at our phones, not interacting with each other. You know, how humans do. <laughs> guy came in a little late for his appointment, signed in, sat down in the middle of the place, had the stereotypical unemployed hillbilly. Uh, uniform on, dirty wife beater, clean coal mining pants, gold chain, fanny pack, socks and sandals, sat down, pulls his iPhone off his hip and goes, Hey Siri, hey Siri, what's the number of the Canal City DMV? And Siri went, I didn't understand. Or whatever she says, and I'm an Android user, fuck iPhone. Ah, yeah, yeah. And instead of saying it clear a little more eloquently, no, no, this you know, scholar of a man went, Listen to me, you stupid bitch! <laughs> And everybody in that room was shocked and appalled except for me because I went, man, that is what people outside of West Virginia think I sound like. <laughs> I step out of the mountain state, I'm like a fucking white trash, a white trash ambassador, man. I've got to talk to Democrats and be like, it's okay, they don't all preach hate. And i got to talk to Republicans and go, it's okay, they drink Mountain Dew too. My girlfriend said, you are going to be the only redneck in Florida when you get down there. And I was like, you have never been to Florida. <laughs> My girlfriend thinks of Florida, she thinks of Disney World and the beach, okay? I had to break it down to her the way she could handle it. I said, Florida is like America's Oreo. You know the outside crust. <laughs> but what the middle's made up of, you don't have a fucking clue what's in there. I'm so glad people from Florida laughed at that joke because they laughed at that joke in 19 other fucking states, y'all, so you got a reputation. <laughs> My girlfriend was trying to get me to go back to the gym. When I first met her, I was working out all the time, and then I kind of slacked off because she was cooking things that didn't rhyme with ramen. Um, <laughs> so she said, you need to start going back to the gym. You're getting pudgy. And I, so, so all right then. So, didn't know that was the word that was going to trigger a giggle. <laughs> I said, well, if I need to go back to the gym because I'm getting pudgy, you need to find somebody else to pay your bills because you're getting really whiny. <laughs> I don't give a damn. Who all you want? I'll sleep on the couch. I'll buy the fucking thing. <laughs> I'm making dozens of dollars telling these jokes, all right? <laughs> Me and her are perfect for each other because we have weird sense of humor, we're both alcoholics, and we are on team no kid, okay? We don't want children at all. Uh, both of us look at having a child as the same way as buying a crock pot, okay? Um, if you have a crock pot, you already know this. You only get enjoyment out of it about every 45 days. And usually when you get home from work, it's not worth the prep to get anything good out of it anyway. However, um, Nobody's gonna get mad if I leave the crock pot in the pantry with the door locked for 90 days, so. <laughs> she asked me one time, she said, what's gonna happen if one day you mess up and you actually get me pregnant? I said, I'm never gonna get you pregnant, okay? That's not gonna happen. My pull-out method is too good. I'm not gonna become a <laughs> She said, 
pull-out method is scientifically proven not to work. I said, my pull-out method is not scientifically proven not to work. It has a 100% success rating, because if I find out you're pregnant, I'm going to go get in my car and pull out of the driveway. <laughs> that joke, by the way. <laughs> my mom is a very religious lady, and she hates the fact that I've mentioned pull-out method, let alone the fact that I know what sex is, okay? <laughs> I love my mom to death. We're just polar opposites to each other. She's a, she's a very religious lady, works in her church. She does uh, she sings. She does contemporary Christian music. She's had two albums so far. One did really good. It went to gold. Uh, the other one did a little better. It went to myrrh. <laughs> She gets really mad at jokes like that. I love them. I always take my jokes to my mom. I have to you know, figure out how they, are, how they are, you know. I'll run a joke by her, and if she laughs, I know it needs a little bit more work. <laughs> but if I run a joke by my mom, and she goes, Andrew! I know that master's ready for the stage. <laughs> my mom's cool with that relationship between me and her, though, man, because when I was younger, I got into all kind of trouble. I can tell you this. Anybody here do drugs? I think we're talking about locking a baby in a pantry, and y'all were with me. And then I said something about drugs, and y'all just clenched up like the government was here. Hell, these babies, but they don't make no one cocaine. No. <laughs> called my mom one time. I'm, just, I'm sorry, I didn't call my mom. She called me. A friend of mine had called me to come down and try acid for the first time. I was 19 years old. There we go. There we go. Uh, those of you that have before you're going to relate to this, those of you who never have, you're going to learn something. 19 years old, I've never done it. My friend calls me up and says, hey man, I got this acid. Come down and try it. Cool. I'm not going to live to be 30. I'm doing that guy I can. Here I am, 36. Proof positive. I cannot stick to a plan. Right when we start to get trippy after doing the acid, my mom calls me. Anybody that has a good relationship with their mother knows you have to answer the phone if she calls. Because if not, she's going to think you're dead behind a Sunoco gas station somewhere. <laughs> with me at 19, that was a 50 50 shot. <laughs> so uh, I answer the phone. And she says, Hey, I need you to come home. I said, Mom, I can't. She says, Andy, I need you at the house. I said, Mom, I can't. Andrew, I need you to come home right now. It's important. I said, Mom, if it's that important for me to come home right now, I need you to first come down to where I am and fight these fucking dragons. 